Good morning. Um, hmm. Let's try that again because it seems like everybody's asleep. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, good. I'm glad. Yes. Uh, it is a brand new day, and God's mercies are new every morning. Amen. So let's stand and celebrate our God, please. You reign over all the earth, we sing it. You reign, justice and peace, you bring it. You reign, fall and fall, you reign. Over star-filled skies, over all created life, what was always meant to be, your glory reigning over me, you're above anything from my way, victorious I live to stand in you always, you reign. Over all the earth we sing it, that you reign, justice and peace you bring it, that you reign, holy one you reign. Hey, greet those around you. Waves. Let's see, last week we did big air hugs. Hug, 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 hug. You reign over all the earth, we sing it. You reign, justice and peace, you bring it. You reign, holy one, you reign. Over star filled skies, over all created life, what was always meant to be. Your glory reigning over me, you're above anything from my way, victorious I live to stand in you always. You reign over all the earth, we sing it, you reign, justice and peace, you bring it, you reign, holy one. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Jesus, reign over me. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Jesus, reign over me. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Jesus, reign over me. You reign over all the earth, we sing it. You reign, justice and peace, you bring it. You reign, holy one, you reign.
my place, laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, and then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting, life has no end. I have been transformed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of life. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life. Brought me from the darkness into glorious there is nothing stronger than the wonder-working power of the blood, the blood. It calls us sons and daughters, we are ransomed by our Father through the blood, the blood. There is nothing stronger and the wonder-working power of the blood, the blood. To call the sons and daughters, we are ransomed by our Father through the blood, the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of life. It has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life. Brought me from the darkness into glorious light. Glory to his name. Glory Uh, you may be seated. That seems to be our uh, custom when we uh, have introduced a special song, although if you've stayed after the service, you've heard this song multiple times. Sing along if you know. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, I will sing for the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. 
give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Amen. The goodness of God. God is good. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Mm. And that's particularly true when it comes to the cross. God is good. One of the things that is true is that God does not behave selfishly. If God behaved selfishly, then he would have done away with humanity a long, long time ago because we fail to measure up to meet any reasonable expectations. But God did not. God chose to send his son. And one, the one thing that has impacted me this year, uh, starting before Easter, was the incident in the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus prayed, Father, if it's possible, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Jesus was willing to, um, as one of my favorite verses in Psalm 15 says, he was willing to swear to his own hurt. He was willing to be unselfish. He was willing to put others' good ahead of his own. It would have been much nicer, much more pleasant, much more agreeable for Jesus to not have to undergo the cross. But he did. And he did it for us. He did not make excuses. He did not blame other people. He said, this is what God asked me to do, and even though it's hard, I'm doing it. That is the God that we celebrate at communion. We remember that on that night when he was betrayed, he took bread, and he broke it. And he gave thanks, and he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And after supper, he took the cup, and he said, This is the blood of the new covenant, the new agreement between God and man, written in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, thank you. Thank you for your incredible love. Your unselfish love. Your giving love. Your love that goes above and beyond. Help us, Lord, to display your love in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. It has been a long time since I have had the opportunity to talk about the offering. Because for a long time we have not taken an offering, and now we are taking an offering. And so I wanted to tell you a story that is a really old story. It dates back to the beginning of the pandemic. Um, because it's the story of the car that is now replaced with the car that I drive now. 
So some of you know that before, um, before no, excuse me, even before that, before the car that um, I have, I have another silver car, and then I had a silver car before that. Uh, before then, um, it was about around August 1st, 2005, that my previous car, Little Red, a red Cavalier, um, it suddenly had a problem. Uh, the speedometer didn't move. And a few days later, I noticed the odometer also wasn't turning. And the next week, I discovered when I went to the gas station that my car was still using gasoline even though the fuel gauge read completely full. Um, I took it to my mechanic, and he very quickly identified the instrument cluster that had gone bad, and he recommended not fixing it. He said, it's an old car. It's going to cost hundreds of dollars to replace that instrument cluster. The car isn't worth it. Start looking for a replacement. Now, I want you to know that the car still drove fine. As long as I didn't care about the odometer, and so long as I stayed with the flow of traffic so that I wasn't speeding, at least no more than anyone else on the road, and so long as I stopped at the gas station, I picked a day of the week and I stopped at the gas station every single week, I could continue driving that car for the foreseeable future. It worked. So, I, did I need a new car? No. Did I want a new car? Yes, I wanted a new car. So, since it was that important but not urgent category, I, set a bu I looked at my bank balance, I set a budget, and I started looking. And I found nothing. There was no decent car to be found at that price, week after week after week. Now, a few weeks after August 1st, 2005, Hurricane Katrina devastated the Gulf Coast and New Orleans. And as a Christian, I felt called to respond, as did my son Matt. He was in high school at the time. We were, both of us had winter break at the end of December. And so we decided that we would, uh, we would go to the Gulf Coast to try and help with relief efforts. We found a church in Pascagoula, Mississippi, who was accepting short-term volunteers. I really didn't want to spend the money on plane tickets because that meant I was putting off the ability to purchase this car that I really, really wanted for even longer. And I remember very clearly the night when I finally gave up. The night when I finally told God, you know what? I'm convinced that you want me to go to the Gulf Coast. So I will put off getting another car so that I have the money for doing this. And so I booked plane tickets for myself and my son and Mark Wood, and the three of us went down. We spent the week before Christmas in uh, Pascagoula, Mississippi. The day after buying those plane tickets, I opened the newspaper and turned to the, to the ads, classified ads, out of habit, I had no real hope that I would find anything, but I said, okay, I have to stay in the habit of looking in here and seeing what the prices are. And what did I find? That day, someone was selling a car that was less than half of the budget that I had set, a budget which had turned up nothing in five months of daily searching. That was no coincidence. God honored my decision to put his needs before my own desires. 
and I enjoyed driving that car for 14 years. So the question before us today is, what has God asked you to do? What is it that God wants you to do to show that He is first in your life? I don't know if anyone's been asked to take the offering. Uh, what? I have a suggestion. Since no one has actually been asked, can we put the offering tray at the back and as they go out, people offering them? Uh, we could do that. I will ask not to. Dan Wartman, could you help, please? Or oh, okay. Okay. All praise to him who reigns above in majesty supreme, who gave his son for man to die, that he might man redeem. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Would you stand as we sing it one more time? All praise to him who reigns above in majesty supreme, who gave his son for man to die, that he might man redeem. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Would you pray for the offering, please? Amen. Please be seated. Uh, let's take some time to pray. Uh, there are many in our congregation who are sick. Um, we have people who are in financial needs, um, people who are struggling in other ways. Let's take a, a few moments and think of the body of Christ here and elsewhere. Uh, and then I'll ask Pat Manley if he would uh, close our time in prayer. Let's pray. Great and glorious Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, thanking you for all your blessings. Thanking you, Lord, for each person that is here, the families represented. Lord, we come to you lifting up those that are struggling with health issues. Lord, we want to lift up Chuck Fairbrother, our pastor. We pray, Lord, your healing hand upon him. We pray for a quick recovery. We ask, Lord, that you would bless him, bless his family. We lift up Jim and Mary Gilbert, Lord. We pray for their strength and health. We lift up Dosha. We pray for her strength and health, Lord. We lift up Aldine. We pray, Lord, for healing for her leg. And Lord, we lift up all the families that are struggling with health and financial issues. We lift up Marcella to you, Lord. We pray that uh, you provide her a job that would meet their family's financial needs. And Lord, we ask for your guidance and wisdom in all our decisions. And Lord, we lift up the people of the Ukraine. We pray, Lord, that you would put a stop to Putin's aggression against that country. And that, Lord, they would be able to return to their homes. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
I thank the Lord for this uh, opportunity that God has given me to stand before you and stand before the Lord, Lord's presence. Great joy to see you all. And may the Lord help us to understand his word. And he has given us this word because we need a direction and directions to our lives as we live on this planet. So that we look unto the Lord and may the Lord help us to understand the word according to his heart's desire, not according to what we desire. And uh, before we get into the word of God, and let us uh, close our eyes and bow our heads to heads and pray to the Lord. Heavenly gracious Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this time you have given us. Lord, help us to lean on you, depend on you. Lord, help us to understand we are weak. Lord, help us to hear your voice this morning. As we come together, as your children at your feet, Lord, you speak to us. Your word has power and authority. Your word gives us a life and change our lives. And Lord, help us to pay attention to you, your word, and so that we can be a blessed with your word. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Today is a Father's Day. And happy Father's Day to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And before we get into the Word of God and uh, our theme, uh, uh, our uh, uh, scripture portion is uh, Malachi chapter 2, verse 10. And people were talking, people of God were talking. In my uh, New King James Version, it says, Treachery of infidelity. Treachery of infidelity. People were talking about what they were talking. Uh, I will read it for you. Have we not all one Father? Has not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously with uh, one another? Our God, our Heavenly Father, is our God, our Creator, and our uh, Father who made us His one by giving everything to you and to me. And he, uh, he left nothing for Himself, but He gave everything to you and to me in order to in order for us to become a children of God. And we celebrate Father's Day and how much uh, respect we give to the Lord. In Malachi, what he said, uh, I'm going, uh, going back to read that uh, one, uh, chapter 1, verse 6, what he said, A son honors his father and a servant his master. If then I am the father, where is my honor? If God asks us the same question today, what would be our answer? If God asks, because he paid it all in order to make us his own, his children, and we always need to be uh, alert and awake and understand how to honor the Lord God, who is our Father. And here is, when God created us, and he said, you and I are children of God. Luke chapter 3, verse last verse, it talks about Luke chapter 2, verse 28. It talks, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. Adam was called and considered he was a son of God. And he, God is our creator, and he called Adam, he is my son. So we are created by the Lord, and we were sons of God, children of God, but unfortunately, Adam sinned against God. He lost that privilege. He lost that connection. He lost that uh, father and son relationship, and he became a son of uh, Satan. Adversary, Satan's son. He became a, a Satan's son. John's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 34, 
Jesus answered them, Most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. And Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, and they became, they lost the sonship and child, children and uh, father and children's relationship, and they became a son of Satan by sinning, disobeying the Lord God. And now, uh, slave to sin, what we talk about, man cannot come out of the bondage of sin on his own. Man cannot. Man doesn't have a power to come and resist the Satan and overcome Satan's tactics. But Lord, our Jesus Christ, who loved us so much, our Father loved us so much, and gave his life and paid the price which we supposed to pay, and he paid it all on the, on the cross, and shed his blood on the cross, and he and cleansed us, and he made us his own. Now we're coming to the point, and we have to, as the children of God, we need to understand how much he paid in order to uh, become a child, children of God. So these are the things uh, this afternoon, this morning, we want to focus on. Our title today, uh, I forgot. Uh, Dale, I may need this uh, flicker. Oh, okay. okay. Now we, uh, uh, there is the introduction for us uh, this morning. And we try to, God is the father of believers. God is the father of believers. And uh, I'm, I have a question for you. And uh, how many of us uh, became a children of God by believing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? We are all. I believe we are all. And we believed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We became a children of God not by what we have done, not on the merit of what we have, not uh, righteous deeds, what we have done, only because of our Lord Jesus Christ, what he has done on the cross, by believing my Lord Jesus Christ paid the price for me in order to become a children of God, so that uh, when I believed, when I received Christ Jesus, I became a child of God. Now I have a Father in heaven, and I have a great relationship with my Father, and who is a good God, who is a perfect God, and who always uh, takes care of us. And uh, how much, how good, how close a relationship today we have with our Father. That always we need to ask ourselves in the light of the Word of God and ask uh, ourselves question that, Lord, some areas I'm not able to keep that relationship with you. And I want to have that close and a relationship with you. I want to walk with you. I want to live for you. I want to bring glory and honor to you. That is my aim. That is my heart's desire. We all need to understand that. John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 12, and the uh, Lord has given us a great uh, privilege. But as many as received, Number one, what we have to understand is most of the time people believe that what Christ has done on the cross. Most of the time people think, even if you ask Satan, Satan also believes what Christ has done on the cross. But uh, most of the time we forget one thing. And surrendering our lives to Christ, we forget that. Believing is not one, one, one side. The other side is giving our total self to the Lord Jesus Christ. Having Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord, our Master, our Leader in our lives. That is the most important in our lives. Otherwise, we cannot enjoy the father and son and daughter relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Unless you and I completely surrender, completely submit our lives to Christ, we may not have that close and blessed relationship with the Father. That is why he said, but as many as received him, number one, received him, to him he gave the right to become a children of God. Receiving 
Christ Jesus by understanding that, uh, Lord, I led my life till this today, but uh, that is all in vain. I cannot lead my life, but I do know, I do believe that if you come into my life, if you be my leader, and I will be a blessed person for me and as well to others. That is why Lord has given authority that whoever believed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and to those who believe in his name, receiving, believing, these two most important in believers' life. These two are more important uh, in believers' lives so that uh, we can have a great and uh, 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 blessed relationship with our Father. And now we can say boldly, confidently, free, freely that, uh, yes, my Father, my God who created me, my God who saved me, who is my Father today? Isn't it? We are. We all have to uh, do that. Lord has given us authority, has given us the great privilege that we can uh, look unto the Father all the time. What he said, uh, Romans 8, 15, for you did not receive, for you did not receive, uh, uh, the, uh, re receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out above Father. Adoption. Last time I remember when I preached here, and I remember adoption. And in adoption, Lord looked at our weakness, our uh, failures, our uh, 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 enmity with the Lord. And he looked at it. Simply he said, as we are, he accepted into his family. We did not do anything. Simply he accepted, admitted, he has given his uh, last name. That last name is Christ children, Christ child. Now, adoption, today we call it Abba Father. Do we have any right that, Lord, Lord, I am not going to call you Abba Father? If we have anything that uh, we did something to be child of God, we would have told uh, to the Lord that, Lord, I am not going to be with you. But uh, simply we have to understand is, in the Lord's mercy, in the Lord's grace, in the Lord's love, and we became a child of God freely. We did not pay anything, did we? Freely, with the grace of, in the grace of God, we have received. That is why he said, 2 Corinthians chapter 16, or 6, verse 18, he said, And I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. My friend, today we are all children of God and our Heavenly Father who is uh, uh, in heaven and who is in us and who always be with us and always be with us and leads and guides us. Isaiah chapter 63, 16, he said, uh, You, O Lord, our Father, our Redeemer from everlasting is your name. That acknowledgement that understanding we all need to have in our lives as we move on, as we move on to the place the Lord set aside for us. And second, what we are going, moving farther, God as a father of believers, and what he does, he blesses us. He always bless his people. And blessing many times, our, uh, when we talk about, when he, we hear about blessing, and our human tendency, we, our mind straight away goes to material blessings. Of course, material blessings are blessings from the Lord. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 19 speaks of that. But I want you to give one thing more than that is, well, the greatest blessing is having our Lord Jesus Christ, believing the Lord's promises, what he promised to you and to me. What he promised is, I never leave you nor forsake you. That is the greatest promise. Because every blessing comes from him. And uh, if I have my God, my heavenly father with me, that is enough for me because he is the one who provides me. Why should we run after all worldly things? 
my friend, when my father is with me, when my father promised, he never changed. He's a faithful God, and he a true God. He's a true God. He's a trustworthy God, and he always be with us. He promised, he fulfills every promise, and he will be with me all the time. I during any time, during the time of tribulation, during the time of uh, sufferings. During the time of anything we face, uh, any challenge we face in our lives, and during the time of our rejoicing, and every minute our God, our Heavenly Father, be with us. That is the blessing. That is the greatest blessing uh, than the material blessings in the world. And how blesses, how, here we, James chapter 1, verse 17, if you, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. I want you to uh, spend, we, uh, we all of us to spend a little time, every good gift. Because my God is a good God, and he always blesses me with a good gift. What are those? And his presence, and his, uh, he's always there for me, and he's my friend, he's my refuge, he was a fortress, he's my rock. He's there for me to give me strength to stand firm in my faith. The good gifts comes from the Lord. My God is a good God. Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 41. What he said is, he rejoices in doing good to his people. Today we are his people. My God is good God. He has a good heart for me. And he always blesses me with the good gifts. He rejoices in doing good to you and to you and to me as a children of God. And 73 Psalm verse 1, Nahum chapter 1 verse 7, he said, uh, those who trust in the Lord, he is good to them. My God always good to them, not uh, on the basis of uh, my life, but on the basis of his uh, goodness. He always good to me. And second is perfect. When God gives perfect gifts, because my God is perfect. Matthew chapter 5 verse 48. He said, be perfect because uh, uh, your heavenly father is perfect. When he gives gifts, that, that is gift, perfectly perfect gift that uh, God gives to me. My heavenly father always think of me. And he always, uh, always thinks about me. So, uh, 115 Psalm verse 12, he said, God always remember you. God is mindful of you so that he will bless you. My God always mindful of me, not because of my righteous life, but uh, because of his perfectness of God. He always gives. He gives us a perfect and good gifts. What gifts we can get? I, I want to give you three uh, uh, important blessings. So number one is a salvation. My God has given me salvation, which is a free gift from the Lord, from the good heart of God. There is a perfect blessing that God has given me, isn't it? That's a perfect. No one can say something needed. It is a perfect once for all. He paid it all, and he has given us no requirement requ requirement required. Ephesians chapter 2 verse, one, uh, verse 8, it speaks of that. The salvation is a free gift of God which you and I are enjoying. Through this, you and I have a, a, a relationship with the Lord. So that we, uh, so my God is a good God, my God is a perfect God, my God always gives me perfect gift, which is the salvation in which I live in today, and tomorrow I'm going to be with him forever. Second one is uh, Psalms 127 verse 3, what he said is the children are gift from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a gift from the Lord. The children to enjoy our lives as we live on this planet, and God has blessed us. That is a good gift, isn't it? Lord blessed us with children. It is a good gift and perfect gift, and there we enjoy well. Uh, lastly, and with the gift is that uh, we are talking about. Ecclesiastes, just now I mentioned that. 519, he said, 
uh, he has uh, blessed us with uh, material blessing, wealth and blessings, but uh, many people will have uh, wealth blessings, but they don't have any peace and joy in it, satisfaction. But remember, when God gives those gifts to enjoy, he said Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 13, he said to satisfy in it, enjoy the blessing of material blessing which he gives us. Enjoyment. Many people lose their uh, joy and peace when they get money. I have a question for you. Can anybody buy peace, joy with money in the world? You may have whole world to enjoy, but uh, do they have a peace and joy in their lives? My friends, I have to tell you, when God blesses us, when God blesses us with material blessings, and he will give peace and joy with it, in it. That is a true blessing. That is a true blessing that God has given us. And lastly, for the blessing of what I'm uh, looking at, the, the Holy Spirit is a gift of God to those who believe, those who receive Christ as their personal Savior. There is a gift that God has given me. And who lives in me, who walks with me, and who always talks with me, and who always makes me understand the word of God, who always counsels me, who always comforts me, who always helps me to pray. Acts chapter 10 verse 45, it says the gift of God is the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2 verse 38, this is the gift of God. We did not buy it. Gift always, no price for it. But it's the greatest gift that God has given us. My Father, my Heavenly Father, who always are mindful of me, and He gave me gifts. Now I'm going faster. God is the Father of believers. The God as Father, compassionate to His people. He's a compassionate God. The original meaning, compassionate, is the, the person who looks at the other person and who is going through certain things and the person who thinks that he is going through with him. That is a compassionate. Compassion means other person going through, when he looks at other person's situation, he thinks and he feels that he is going through the same situation with him. That is a compassion. My Lord knows my heart. My Lord, my, my situation, my Lord knows my troubles, and he is a compassionate God, always be with me, always uh, takes care of me, and he always, uh, with a compassionate, he consoles me. 103 Psalm, verse 13, it says, as, the, as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. Third one, God as Father comforts me. Comforts in our trouble. Comforts in our trouble. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulations, tribulation that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Comforter, my God always comforts me. As a mother, he comforts me. As a father, he comforts me. As a shepherd, he comforts me. Say, mother. Isaiah 66, verse 13, God said, as mother comforts her child, I will comfort you. How many of you needed comfort during this time? If you look at all the world, the entire whole world, if you look at news, and everywhere we see the turmoil and chaos. As a children of God, we need comfort in those situations. We need comfort. My God, always my heavenly Father, be with me and comfort me all the time. Say comfort. And one more point I want to mention that the Lord always uh, not comforts us, but uh, to make us comforter. He always makes us comforter. That is the meaning here. 
Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. He comforts us. And he helps us to uh, stand firm in our faith. And he makes us as a comforter to other persons. That is our God. And now, uh, next we move on. God as a Father shapes us and molds us. He's our God. He has a great plan and purpose in your life and my life. And he wants to, uh, he, he, he wants to shape us. God as Father shapes and molds us. Father who has a great purpose and plan in our lives. And the great meaning in our lives. When we come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, God enlightened my eyes to understand why I am living in this planet. Why I am living as a child of God. Do you think, thought about it any time? Many times, many Christians, uh, without plan and without purpose and meaning, they live. But God has given me a meaning to my life when I live. What meaning is, I have to live uh, my life to glorify the Lord, magnify the Lord all the time. He shapes me through his discipline because he loves me. The Lord mentioned, Revelation chapter 3, verse 19, he mentioned that because I love you, I discipline you. Nowadays, we lost that uh, uh, understanding. Most of the people think that uh, the love of God, mis misunderstanding, mis miscommunicating word in the world today. The love of God, when God loves his children, he disciplines their children, his children. And as we are, he disciplines because he wants to show himself through you to the world. He wants to show himself through you and through me to the darkened world that he is a God, he is a savior. That is the meaning. Lord has a meaning in your life and my life. As a heavenly father, he has that meaning. My friend, we all need to understand and he shapes us and with a master plan, with his master mind, and shapes us, he takes us into his hand and he shapes us and molds us and may the people see Christ in your life and my life. That is his vision. That is his heart's desire in you in me. My father knows. My father always shapes me and molds me. Deuteronomy chapter 8, 5, it said, you should know in your heart that as man chastens his son, so the Lord, your God, chastens you. People may do, uh, do not understand. When, uh, when they go through, they will be mad at God. Even believers, sometimes. They will be mad at God. Lord, I am your child. And you are giving these many things to face. But remember, Lord gives us some discipline and corrections in our lives to, in order to be like him. In order to make us like him. Christ-likeness. And so that people see that uh, the nature of Christ in you and in me, they glorify the Lord. That is why he said, Matthew chapter 5, what 16, uh, if you look at that, shine forth your light so that people see uh, your good works and they glorify the Heavenly Father. That is the meaning in your life and my life God has given. We move on to next to the well, point. God as a Father depend His people. He's our defender. You may and I may think that I can handle it. And many times we think that uh, I can handle it. Oh, there is nothing. But remember, my friends, my God is my defender to the fatherless and widows because they're helpless. Do you remember, do you think that you're helpless in the world? We are all. We may take care of a few things, but uh, we are helpless in this world. And my God always be with me. His promise is I never leave you not forsake you. I will be with you until the end of the age. And he is with me all the time. David, once he went to fight against uh, Goliath, and Goliath thought uh, his young boy, a young man, 
what he does to me. Do you remember that? Those situations we may go through, but remember, God will be with us and who goes before us and fight for us and gives us a victory and leads us to that direction. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 13 and 16. Later on, you can read that. But he said, 30, actually, I forgot, 30. Deuteronomy 30, verse 6, 16, 6 and 8, if you read that. Even Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 3 to 4, if you look at that, if you read those ones, and there it says, I go before you, I depend, I depend the enemy, and I will give you. He is the one, my defender, all the time. No need to worry for anything. We move on to next. Uh, Zephaniah, I, I'm going to read uh, the 12, 65, 8, what he said. As a, fa a father of the fatherless, a dependent of widows. And Ze 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 Zechariah chapter 12, 8, in that day the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Jerusalem signifies and symbolizes today his people like you and me. We are his people, so we need to. And lastly, and God as a father carries us to the end. Carries us. God as a father carries us through. He's always there for us to carry me through. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 31, what he said is, and in the wilderness where you saw how the Lord your God carried you as a man carries his son. Man always carries his son and put him, put his son on his shoulders and take him, right, carries him. Lord, how many times our God carried us like that. So that is our last uh, one, and we need to understand. Father, as a father, our heavenly father, carries us uh, through and to the end. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, what he said is, and when he begins the work, he never stops in the middle, and he completes it. And he carries the same way. God has a plan, and God has given us to come to him, and we gave our lives to surrender our lives to Christ and start begin the journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he begins their journey, and he never leaves us nor forsakes us, and he carries us through and to the end. And you and I have to understand where we are now. When God asks, we always need to be. Application when we come to that, and we all need to be. Lord. I do not want to go away from you. David uh, uh, written, uh, had written in uh, Psalm 51, verse 10, he said, do not cast me away from your presence and take away the Holy Spirit. That desire we need to have. And uh, he carries us through, and uh, uh, how he carries, one is that on his shoulders, and Deuteronomy 33, 27 says, the eternal God is your refuge, Underneath are the everlasting arms. Underneath, where we are, and we are in his hands. And he carries us through. That means we do nothing, but my God, my heavenly Father will do it. I do nothing, my God will take care of me. That is, we, know, we have to lean on you, depend on you all the time. Lastly, verse 68, 19, Psalm 68, 19, NIV, NIV says this way, Praise be to the Lord to our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. My God always be with me, and he always takes care of me. He always carries me through. I do nothing, but I do. As a child, I want to keep, put myself in the hands of God. Let him do it. Let him take care of me. My friends, this is the encouragement that God is giving and this morning. He is our Heavenly Father. He never leaves us, nor forsakes us. But He is the one who defends us, who carries us through. He shapes us and molds us, and who and there for us and blesses us with His presence. May the Lord bless this world. May the Lord bless all of us with His presence until we leave this earth. May God bless this world. Let us pray.
Heavenly gracious Father, we thank you so much, God. You have given us the time to at least to sometimes spend, uh, spend some time in, the, in your presence. Understand who you are. How you take care of us. Take care of us. Oh, Father, we thank you. You're always mindful of us. You always, always uh, thinks about us, Father. I pray that God and help us to be in you, with you, and uh, put ourselves in your hands, lay ourselves in your hands, and we'll have a peace and joy in your presence, Father. We thank you so much. We thank you for your blessings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Harold. Thank you for that message. God is our Father. and We have His 100%, and He wants our 100%. Are we willing to give ourselves completely to Him? Ponder that you know, as, we, uh, as we stand and sing our song of invitation. I'm before you today and there's just one thing that I want to say thank you Lord thank you Lord for all you've given to me for all the blessings that I cannot see thank you With a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. all you've done in my life. You took my darkness and gave me a light. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You took my sin and my shame. You took my sickness and healed all my pain. Thank you, With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Oh, it's good to be here today. Are there announcements? Well, yes. Okay. <laughs> Happy Father's Day to all the fathers and grandfathers and prospective fathers in the room. We have a special box lunch for every single person in this room. If you have family at home that weren't able to make it to church, please take one for them also. Um, if you have a neighbor that you know may be um, ill at this time or just not able to go out to the grocery store, take one for that person also. So as you exit, go straight across into the fellowship hall. There'll be someone there to greet you. Each man, each male person has a special gift. Go into the kitchen and pick up your lunches. We have ham sandwiches or turkey sandwiches salad, dessert, and that's it. Okay, great. Uh, thank you all of you who are, um, who, who are cleaning up. I uh, appreciate you doing that uh, without even being asked. Uh, Dan Wortman, would you close us in prayer, please?
Amen. Step out of the shadows, step out of the grave, break into the wild, and don't be afraid. Run into wide open spaces, races waiting for you. Dance like a weight has been lifted, races waiting. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. Oh, the Spirit is here, let there be freedom, let there be freedom. all of your burdens, bring all of your scars, come back to communion, come back to the stars, run into wide open spaces, races waiting for you, dance like a weight has been lifted, races waiting where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. Oh, the Spirit is here, let there be freedom, let there be freedom. Shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives may hold, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Chains will fall, prisons shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives may hold, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. When the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. Oh, the Spirit is here, let there be freedom, let there be freedom. God bless you. Remember Enjoy. that God loves you. Enjoy your lunch. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief, I raise a hallelujah, my weapon comes to believe, I raise a hallelujah, heaven comes to fight for me, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise, death is defeated, the king is alive. I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah. darkness free, I raise a hallelujah in 
the middle of the street. I raise a hallelujah. Here you lost your hold on me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. I'm from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. Sing a little louder in the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder, my weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder, heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder. In the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. 